Hey everybody, nice to see you, nice to be back. How was your week? My week was busy, 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 but it was a, it was a good busy. Um, we had the Thanksgiving holiday in the United States. Uh, mine was extremely quiet, two people, one dog, that's it. Um, and that felt appropriate for this year. Uh, but mostly, I, it was a busy work week, busy work week, a new technique video, out, another one underway, a bunch of other videos that are larger scale projects, kind of ongoing, and uh, and of course knitting, uh, particularly domestic knitting. Rosamond's dog sweater, I am delighted to announce, is just a few rounds on one little sleeve shy of being complete, and that feels good. We have had a preliminary try-on, and I had some thought of maybe trying to put up a video of our fitting session, uh, but then came back to my senses and realized that um, it is practically impossible to film something like that by myself with Rosamond because she is, uh, she's the dog who, let's just say, she's not really deeply concerned with pleasing. You know those dogs that, that always look up at you um, with, with, with the big eyes, the, the great big, just the pleading eyes saying, want something from me so I can so I can meet your expectations that Roz is not that dog um Roz's attitude towards me is is more sort of like um I am a restrictive parent and she is a teenager who's oh about 15 years old and uh and and feels like this would be a good time to rebel that that's just Rosamond's perpetual state of being so she loves wearing sweaters. She really does. I mean, I wouldn't expect her to wear them unless it was super cold here if she didn't like them. But on the other hand, um, she does not like fittings. She really doesn't. And she wiggles and squirms and rolls her eyes. And again, she's very much like a like a 15-year-old. And um, so I, I have no video of that. But I will make sure that I get some uh, some good images of the dog sweater when it's finished. And I'm, I'm quite proud of it. Uh, you know, the I put it on and it fit and I felt great and she obviously sort of took to it. She likes it herself, so that's good. Um, so I'll be finishing up that, I hope, soon. But it's at one of those stages where I can either finish it properly and pay attention to what needs to be done or I can knit and talk to you. Um, so it's at one side and I am back to the um, everlasting gobstopper that is this uh, sideways linen stitch scarf. And somebody actually wanted to know why the linen stitch was sideways. Well, the linen stitch is not sideways. The linen stitch is in its usual orientation. Um, it is the scarf that is being knit uh, sideways in the sense that when I cast on for this thing, I, I crowded a very long needle with as many stitches as I could possibly fit onto it. And, um, and that is going to be the length of the scarf, whereas, of course, normally um, the, the more usual order of things is to cast on for the width of the scarf. In this, you cast on for the length of the scarf, and it's a pretty long scarf. A, a good day for me with progress on this is that I get maybe two rows done. Uh, and yeah, so that gives you some idea of how long the rows are. Now, I love the effect. I'm delighted by the effect and one of the reasons that you maybe want to work a scarf um, sideways in linen stitch like this the reason that's uh, kind of a popular thing to do is because if you are working in yarns that have any kind of a color change or or frankly even a variegation having rows that are that long from side to side to side those very long rows will break up flashing and pooling. That's where uh, the a particular color in a variegated yarn will all kind of clump together in the knitted fabric, which uh, if you like it, that's great. A lot of people, myself included, are not nuts about that effect. So those very, very long rows will tend to prevent that from happening. So rather than getting flashing and pooling, instead what you get is an appearance that in a way is closer to the wonderful um, the cornucopia of colors. Oh, did I just say that? Oh, cornucopia of colors. I, I don't want to be that knitter. Okay, I just so pretend I didn't say cornucopia of colors. 
what you will get because of the long rows breaking up the flashing and pooling is the colors in the skein, in the ball, are going to spread themselves out across the surface of the fabric. And what I find is that that is much closer to the appearance of the colors in the ball or the skein that made me happy, that made me want to buy it in the first place. So, so yeah, somebody had asked about that. Why, why would you do this uh, in this fashion? And, and also, why are, why are the linen stitches sideways? Which they're not. Um, although, coincidentally, yes, this week's technique video was about sideways knit stitches. Um, and that was, a, that was a, a fun one to film, let me tell you. There's some angles in there that... Uh, required a lot of effort. But um, anyhow, so I'm back on to doing mostly domestic knitting at this point. Um, and I'm starting to see among my friends online the signs of panic that it's it's the season of giving and they are trying to meet a, a target in terms of holiday gifts put together and well, that's always in, been interesting for me. I, When I was a brand new knitter, I, I did quite a few knit holiday gifts, some of them quite large. But now, um, since most of my knitting, knitting is on deadline, I, I shy away from that kind of thing. What I found was that for me personally, it turned uh, December 25th, because my family's particular holiday this time of year happens to be Christmas, um, it, Instead of December 25th being on the calendar, a beautiful gold star covered with glitter, um, it was just a big red X indicating that this was um, what in design is called a drop-dead date. It means if you can't deliver the work by this time, just don't bother with it. And uh, of course, of course, there is always the option of presenting a gift on the needles. If you're not familiar with that, it basically means um, showing somebody uh, either a project in progress or even honestly just needles and a ball of yarn and uh, saying this is intended to become or this is on its way to becoming the gift that I will give you for Christmas but it's not going to be ready on Christmas so you can do that um, usually though I I felt it was kind of anticlimax for me and so I I never liked it much, and so I used to just beat my brains out to try to get things ready by whatever holiday. I mean, it could also be, a, you know, it could be a baby shower or it could be a birthday. Whatever it was, I would get really hung up on that. And so now, usually what I find myself doing is knitting or otherwise making handmade gifts for whomever I want whenever I want, and they are very, very seldom going to be attached to a particular event or a particular date. And then while I work on the thing, I'm more likely to be thinking nice thoughts about the person I'm going to give it to as opposed to grumbling about feeling like I, I work on a factory assembly line and, and being all grouchy, or even grouchier than my normal setting. And uh, the other thing that I've done, by the way, is I, uh, I have cut down severely in my life who gets things that are handmade. Um, I, I, I didn't really do it formally. There was not a moment when I sat down and made a list, but I, I do have a general principle. And my general principle is that aside from extraordinary circumstances, in order to get a handmade gift from me, you either have to be a member of my immediate family circle, and by immediate, I mean, I don't have a whole lot of family left. And when I say immediate, I mean immediate. No, no cousins, you know, not, not even aunts and uncles at this point. Um, so uh, you have to be a member of the immediate family or, or you uh, have to be providing me with very high quality free sex. And uh, those categories, I hasten to uh, clarify, are mutually exclusive. Um, but that's that's it. Those that, are the two things that you can do to get a hand knit gift out of me. Those those two things. I remember there was a a chat going on in an online forum at one point, and um, people were talking about this very subject, and every everybody had their own way of looking at it, which is fascinating and also wonderful. You know, um, I mean, there were people who, at one end of the spectrum, never knit anything 
for themselves at all. And all of their knitting was for others. Um, sometimes for others they did not know and would never meet. They, they knit entirely or crocheted entirely or whatever it was they did, it was always for a charity. Um, and some who were just always making things for particular friends, particular family. And so full spectrum, including people who said that they absolutely never knit for anybody else. And so I put in my little two cents with my little, you know, cute two category list of how to get a gift out of me. And there was this absolute nut job who belonged to the forum um, and who, um, I, pompous does not begin to describe this fellow's attitude. It, it, it really doesn't. He was kind of a chest thumping, um, preening, tail spreading, um, egomaniac, cuckoo. And he chimed in because he always had to, and he, he liked to one up other people. So I presented my list and he said, well, your list is fine, but for me, I would have to include, um, I'll knit for any man who saved my life at least twice. And I replied honestly, truly, without really thinking about it. I, I, I replied, um, well, I've seen how other people react to you, and that must be a very, very short list. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it, people think knitters are nice. You know, I mean, and I, I, I guess, you know, on the whole, I find them to be good people. Otherwise, you know, let me tell you, I'd spend my time with other people. But um, we, we have our moments, too. You know, we have our limits as to how much we can put up with. And I just, you know, I, I just needed to, to just stick a pin in that balloon just whenever possible. Anyway, that, that doesn't reflect very well on me, I realize. Maybe you've been thinking of me as a little teddy bear who never has an unkind word to say about anybody, but um, <laughs> that's not exactly true all the time, although I do try to rein it in. Um, so where was it? Was I talking about knitting? Knitting, knitting. There's Mr. Cuckoo Bananas and who you'll knit for and who you won't. And uh, Oh, yeah, so I really, um, I don't suppose there's any point to that except to say so. Yeah, we're in the we're in the season where the uh, holiday knitting is is the uh, chief thing on the plate for a lot of people who make things in a lot of different ways. Um, I'm sort of opting out. I'm kind of opting out. I I have some things in progress or in mind for various people, and um, and those things will be finished and they'll be presented, but they'll be presented when they're ready. Yeah. So, although, you know, I, I will say this, I will say this, is that my opinions and my thoughts and feelings are really like, they are, they swing back and forth on a pendulum. And so at the moment, I'm Mr. I don't make things for holidays. And, um, but that might change. It could change next week. You know? So whether you are in my headspace, where you're not going to knit a darn thing for anybody, uh, for the holidays, or whether you are frantically trying to knit uh, mittens for, you know, the entire handbell choir or something like that. Um, good luck, huh? right? And uh, I mean, I'll see you again soon. But um, I, I hope everybody is. I hope everybody is well begun, and above all, I hope that you're relaxed and enjoying yourself. Because um, remember, uh, people that love you love you because you're you. They don't love you because you make stuff for them. You know, so so remember that it's lovely to express love with the things that we make by hand, but it's not the only way that we can show it. And they're, they're not tokens that we have to give in order to receive the love back, or at least they shouldn't be, um, in my opinion, because, again, this is all my opinion. But who else's opinion am I supposed to give on a vlog? Right. Yeah. So anyway, um, I'm going to take a look at this and see how many stitches I've done incorrectly while I've been talking to you, and, um, and then uh, correct as necessary, and then get on with this thing. Um, but uh, also, I think I'm going to finish Roz's sweater today. So keep an eye out on the channel for, you know, if I can possibly do it, maybe I can get somebody else to, to help with the process. Maybe we'll do a little runway show with Rosamund. But if nothing else, I'll get some good photographs to, uh, to put in the memory book. So uh, yeah, so that's it. I hope everybody uh, has a good week. 
that's coming up, there will be more things appearing on the channel. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you for continuing to tune in because the channel is is growing. And that feels really happy. And I hope that I can do things better and do more things. And um, uh, yeah, so is that it? Is that it? Boy, how's that for an elegant finish? Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to know about future episodes. Click like or leave me a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you really, really liked what you saw, check out my Patreon campaign, where my patrons enjoy exclusive access to downloads, live streams, and other bonus material every week.